So let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Marilyn Prince. I'm a solutions architect at Variant. I'm joined by Massimo Bertoli, he's the CTO and President of Variant, and Bernard Zizzerman, our Enterprise Business Development Director. The purpose of this webinar is to introduce you to Variant's technology offering in the mainframe replatforming and rehosting area. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you have a problem, raise your hand. If you have a question, you can put it into the chat area. I'll be monitoring both of those throughout the webinar. We'll answer as many questions as we can at the end, and those that uh, we can't get to, we'll send an email answer within a day or two. There are some handouts, including a copy of the slides and notes. Feel free to download them if you want to. There's no need to take notes. In the follow-up email to today's webinar, you'll get a link to a recording of the video. This is the first of a series of six webinars focusing on modernization, both in distributed or open systems and mainframe environments. Today we'll show you some slides and we'll uh, have some polls and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. So let's get started. Massimo? Hello everybody and thanks to join. This is Massimo Bertoli speaking. Uh, this, is, this slide is just to <clears throat> make a little uh, show and short presentation of our company. But basically, Variant uh, was founded uh, in 2005. And uh, in 10 years, uh, after 10 years, uh, we was able to add over a million of users worldwide, uh, hoping happy user, but definitely we try to, to take care about uh, our user all the time. This uh, happened thanks uh, to, of course, to our entities and, uh, and distributors that are worldwide. As you see, uh, we uh, have uh, a representative everywhere in the world. Our corporate uh, headquarters is based on San Diego, California, pretty nice place uh, where Marilyn lives. And I'm happy for her that uh, he lives in a very nice place. Why I'm uh, in, uh, I, live, I live in an European quarter that is in Piacenza. Piacenza is not so famous, but it's an Italian uh, city very in the north, close to Milan and Turin. So we are very close to the business in Italy and basically where everything started uh, in the very beginning. Uh, we have also uh, our research and development center in Pisa. That Pisa is uh, another famous city in Italy, uh, not just uh, for the, its legendary leaning tower, but also because in Pisa there, there is uh, one of the oldest IT universities of Europe uh, for, the IT, for the IT named the Normale of Pisa. We have uh, with this university a special relationship in order to select uh, talent people to work uh, in our research and development center. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we, we are present uh, in uh, most places uh, in, in the world. Next slide, please. This is where we are. We like to say that uh, uh, where there is a cobble, this is definitely a good place for us and uh, a good place for our variant cobble. Uh, today, variant uh, have uh, installation uh, uh, of its cobble running on uh, Linux, uh, most of Unix uh, proprietary platform and Windows, of course. Uh, and uh, our technology uh, can be delivered from uh, the standalone mobile devices. Uh, today, we support uh, Android, and we have a cover that runs on Android, uh, to the biggest uh, machine, the IBM Z. Um, and in, in this year, well, starting from where we start, uh, we, made, uh, we face a lot of migrations, uh, cover migration from any kind of proprietary uh, COBOL, like for example, IBM E, HP Nonstop, OpenVMS, uh, Unisys, and many others. And in this experience uh, basically allow us uh, and our technology to grow, to have uh, um, any version of our product better than previous in terms of compatibility, performance, uh, and capability. Uh, without forget that uh, our mission is continue to evolve and modernize our product. For example, Variant every year has provided two major versions of this Cobol Evolve Suite, uh, just because we want to improve the product and want, and want to, to stay updated with the incoming technology that comes from the IT world. Next, please. Okay. Well, uh, I think it's my turn now. Thank you, Massimo. I'm Bernard Zizerman. Uh, good morning. 
afternoon, evening, or night. I have known personally many of you for a long time and work with some. I'm very glad to present our joint solution, variant HTWC, that we call Cobble Plus, and at IBM mainframe we're hosting to LUW, Linux, Unix, Windows platforms, on-premises, on a cloud, or hybrid. The reasons to replatform a mainframe are numerous. The list that you can see covers much of the rationale to replatform, that is, replace mainframe applications on a more modern standard platform. The main reason to do this is obviously cost, cost always cost. But modernization concerns, both at the development and deployment levels, are quite important. But how to do this? What are the replacement path? If you have standard requirements, largely shared with companies with the same activities, or if your needs are horizontal, such as human resources, for instance, implementing a package is generally the best choice. However, mainframe applications are generally specific and represent an individual asset of the organization which, who uses it, private or public. The full rewrite is the best in theory, but we know that this leads to very expensive, lengthy, and risky projects, while it does not add any value when the functionalities remain mainly the same. Transformation of COBOL into Java or C Sharp is also a risky solution, as there are too many differences between procedural and object oriented code. With this mechanism, you cannot automatically generate Java code maintainable by pure Java developers that do not know COBOL. That's a big problem. So why not use a COBOL to Java compiler, such as is COBOL in this case? Staying on the mainframe is what most people have done and still do. It is a no-risk approach, but continue to be very expensive. Contrary to competitors, we will soon contribute to make this approach less expensive by using our upcoming ISCOBOL for ZOS. This will be covered on our webinar session of July 1st, and then rehost and modernize. Most of you are familiar with rehosting that people sometimes name differently, like isofunctional migration, decommissioning, downsizing, right-sizing, and so on. My definition of rehosting is the following. Rehosting is a process based on technologies and automated tools, which allows to move legacy systems to more modern open systems platform while keeping all software functionalities. It consists of infrastructure and system replacement, middleware replacement, application migration, data migration, and post-migration maintenance. This is the cheapest approach which generates the highest return on investment because less human resources are needed. The testing can be largely automated. This is very important when you consider that testing represents sometimes more than half of the cost of a migration project. The application and user interface stay the same, and the developer still develop in COBOL with his COBOL, while leveraging on the simplicity and effectiveness of our ACE COBOL IDE. And you'll see later on more unique COBOL plus differentiators. HTWC has a long life in providing legacy modernization tools and services. Founded in 1995 and based in Rome, the Eternal City, it has constantly sticked to its core business and expanded its install base of IBM mainframe customers decommissioning their system. The product offering of HTWC is composed of ICON, a powerful portfolio analysis tool that we won't cover today, XFrame, the full rehosting solution that we'll mostly cover today, XBM, a general purpose job scheduler, H2R, an automatic transformation tool from AMSDB hierarchical database to relational. Completed by two change, a set of automated conversion services, such as PL1 to COBOL, transformation of easy trave to COBOL and assembler to COBOL. HTWC has a 
number of reference, you can see some names here. Uh, this is just an extract of migration project that had been performed with XFrame. Uh, the sites are of various sizes and complexity. You have, uh, I think, three success stories in your hands out, but we'll be glad to provide you with others. Uh, this is more uh, recent references, for instance. And I will just uh, mention two uh, quite recent, the uh, commune uh, of the city of Milano, Comune di Milano, and one which is not here, which is uh, called Crescent Financial Institution. It's interesting, but it's using ISCOBOL. Okay, I will use indifferently the term COBOL plus XFRAME powered by ISCOBOL or just XFRAME. I will mostly, in fact, use the last one. They just mean the same for us. This will give you a high level introduction to extreme functionality, Ex extreme functionality, I'm sorry. Let us look how each domain is replaced through the re-hosting process. COBOL application, batch and transactional, are recompiled with this COBOL, which is highly compatible with IBM Enterprise COBOL. Transaction monitors, CICS and IMS TM are replaced by XCICS with possible XIMS add on. You've probably guessed that for many IBM products, we have put an X at the front, so it's easy to understand what the product is. VSAM files, especially KSDS, are replaced by XVSAM, but they can be transparently moved to relational database with V2R, VSAM to relational. DB2 tables are replaced by your preferred database choice. JCLs are transformed into easily maintainable uh, scripts while keeping the same flow batch execution with XEBE, XBE, providing full batch processing. IMSDB hierarchical database are replaced by relational database with H2R hierarchical to relational. BMS for CICS and MFS for MSS, IMSTM maps are maintained with XSDF. We've got full connectivity in the IBM mainframe network with advanced support of regions. XSort is a DF sort compatible tool, including in the delivery. Globally, we transport all IBM mainframe components to LUW platforms on premises, on a cloud, or on hybrid infrastructure. This is uh, the full list of all the uh, components of the suite, and we are not going to cover them. Just a few. Start with uh, XCICS. XCICS is a transaction monitor which is a native implementation of IBM CXCS for LUW. It provides a very high degree of uh, compatibility and is set up to uh, support thousands of users, local users, remote users with a high transaction throughput. It manages all the entities that you have with CICS, program, transaction, files, queues, maps, and so on. And we have also a PPC LU 6.2 and the region insertion for uh, XCICS with CICS. Uh, the connectivity, uh, the, excuse me, other features uh, which are uh, native to XCICS are listed here. So we will not go into details, but the people who are familiar with uh, uh, CICS will recognize all these uh, functionalities that we, we mimic. Uh, I don't like the term emulate in uh, our XCICS uh, product. And of course, we handle uh, dynamically the transformation of CEDIC to ASCII, which is, uh, of course, a retirement. We support uh, the three types of region, TOR, AOR, and DOR. Uh, this way, an XCICS uh, instance or system can uh, immediately uh, integrates in a Kix Blex, for instance, and be seen just like another CICS region. XIMS is an extension to XCICS 
which allows to uh, rehost uh, IBM IMS TM, which was called IMS DC in the past. So it performed the transformation of the IMS TM entities to XICS for the rehosting. For instance, the MFP maps are replaced by BMS maps. And we have some tool, uh, I mentioned one, which make this automated transformation. Regarding the connectivity, we have a next entity set of uh, connectors. And uh, this connectivity is uh, with front end application. And XCICS can act as a provider of consumer of uh, web services. And we as well support uh, G2E and WebSphere, WebSphere MQ uh, connectivity. Regarding the terminal, uh, what we call XTND, this is a protocol for connection to any TN3270 terminal. Uh, if you have such terminal and you have developed some special macros or application written in HLL API, uh, you can keep them without any change. It will work the same as under CICS. You, uh, the connectivity is done by IP address or LU name, you can choose. And uh, you also can connect with uh, SSL from application uh, using TN3270, TN3270E protocol. We have also a terminal emulator written in Java called X4G, uh, which has a, a direct connection without going through uh, XTND protocol. Uh, well, the main advantage is that it's free, it's part of our delivery. so. Uh, you don't have to pay uh, maintenance for a terminal emulator if you use X4G. We also indulge the print manager directly through the terminal, as well as a PDF conversion. The United Console is a, a tool which uh, provides a, a visual image of the uh, behavior of uh, activities of all regions so from there you can uh, monitor what you the, the behavior you can run stop configure multi-region on the from your workstation now it's time to pass uh, the control and uh, marlene i think we had the Marlene? Yes, I'm here. Do you want to do a poll? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I think I uh, I forgot the poll. <laughs> there okay. was a first poll, yeah. So I'm going to start the first poll. What transaction monitors are you using? And we'll give it a few seconds to run. And you can choose more than one option here. Um, if you'd like, I'm going to give it a few, a little bit longer. Just uh, click on it. If you're using any transaction monitoring, again, you can use more than one. That's great. They're coming in now. Okay, just a few okay. more seconds. And uh, all right, so let's see what we got. Hmm. Uh, well, I will come on, very interesting. So 60% of you uh, use CICS, so well, you are at the right place, I suppose. But 20% uh, use IMS uh, TM. Uh, so, and even 10% use IDMS DC. Okay, well, very interesting. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not at a good uh, slide. Okay. So, well, do you want to do the next? Uh, no, now it's uh, time. Uh, no, 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 no. We uh, we now pass uh, the control to Massimo, who okay. will uh, talk us about the performance and scalability of XCS. 
Yes, performance uh, <clears throat> all the time are very important uh, when you face a common migration, definitely a platform migration. So uh, what we can do and we can say about uh, our implementation, ATWS implementation, that everything uh, runs uh, in a way that allow performance and scalability. This is pretty important. So I mean, uh, doesn't matter how much you can use need to connect, uh, the enough things is uh, co uh, co set up properly the machine in order to be able to serve uh, and to, uh, all, all kind of performance that is needed. And the pre-allocated a pool of process uh, that basically is a pool of tasks that uh, where in this pool uh, there is uh, uh, the kicks and transaction are executed uh, and uh, uh, this pool can be set up uh, uh, once time and then adjust dynamically with uh, for the administrator. So if there is a need of a, a, a bigger pool to manage uh, all kicks transaction, definitely this is not a big deal to extend. Of course, uh, the, all the ground task. Uh, are uh, still managed as a, ta uh, as a background task, I mean, uh, um, print task, uh, job, print job, uh, and everything that runs uh, uh, is, is run as a dedicated process. Using process uh, also allow a kind of isolations between everything that is pretty important to have in a system. But of course, in, in addition of that, there is uh, many TCPAP service that are, are suitable for all kind of needs uh, that uh, are necessary when run when you run outside the mainframe. Like for example, the server to uh, to allow uh, all 3270 uh, emulator to connect. Uh, the um, uh, is a socket listener, uh, the IP server, and HTTP server things like that. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Massimo. Marlene, we'll have a second poll about MIPS. Now, okay. Mylene? Sorry, I was still muted. Hi, everyone. Here's the <laughs> poll. Uh, <laughs> we'll just take a few more minutes, just answer one of them. Um, this is for general interest. Great, got some votes coming in. Huh. Interesting, who's going yeah. to win? <laughs> <laughs> we should have bet before. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it, it looks like... Uh, well, we have about... Uh, 50% okay. voters is not bad. Yeah, and I'm going to yeah. show the results here. Yeah. Looks like we have quite a few in that just under a thousand range. Yeah, but it's quite yeah. uh, quite it balanced. Yes, it is. All right, so there's the second poll. Back to you, Bernard. Okay, thank you. And now there is another poll. Paul, before we go to the data, this oh, is a okay. poll about data storage. Yes. This is another one where you can answer more than one, uh, one answer. Bernard, do you expect to, do you expect to have more than one uh, uh, areas do do people often keep their stuff in vSAM and DB2, for instance, or yeah, it looks like it's very balanced. Yeah, I mean probably uh, the one at these. Well, we we have all case. Some have only vSAM, which is not too common. Some are very two DB2, which is more and more common, and the other are, are mixed. But okay, I see that we have also uh, quite a number uh, using IMSDB. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You'll uh, be able okay. to show the result as well. Yep, here we'll show that. There you go. So that's what our listeners are using for their data storage. Okay. Okay. So Very good. thank you. Uh -huh. Now let's talk about XVSAM. XVSAM is a full VSAM emulation layer. 
uh, supporting KSDS, ESDS, and RSDS. So we have all the standard uh, transaction we start and after image recovery procedure. Online CICS, XCICS program access VSAM file through definition in the CSD uh, configuration file. And batch program uh, access uh, VSAM file on operate lack on the mainframe means that we have equivalents of disposition, disk, catalog, we handle GDG, and uh, we handle also printing uh, commands, ASA and others. We have also an XVSAM editor. XEB or XEB. This is a high performance batch execution engine for JCL. XB allows the execution, so of COBOL, PL1, C, SS, and so on, but any program which uh, can be uh, invoked uh, through the, the, the script, uh, shell script, whatever uh, is a shell, can be uh, executed and uh, controlled under XCD. So we handle uh, connection, commit, rollback, disconnect. And this is good because you don't have to modify and introduce all this functionality in the program. It's done uh, directly by uh, this batch manager. And of course, we provide a traditional replacement for utilities such as ID cams, IBFR for gene, uh, and so on. And uh, the result of batch uh, manager execution goes uh, directly to XPool, which I will not present in detail, but XPool allows to visual a uh, little like SDFS, but is, is different the result of execution of batch. And also it can be integrated directly for more processing in our uh, XBM uh, job uh, scheduler. What about, X, uh, what about JCL conversion? Okay. We do not provide JCM emulation, contrary to others competitors, but we recommend to migrate JCLs into shell scripts. This will allow to disengage from specific mainframe language and use standard language, shell, known by non-mainframe developers, therefore uniforming the maintenance of uh, LUW batch handling. Uh, the converton XML says uh, conv, this is a converter from uh, JCL, and we handle JCL both from uh, ZOS and ZVSE to LUW uh, shell script, that's uh, C shell, Corn shell, POSIX, which is Bond shell, and uh, Windows shell, when the target is Windows. Uh, this conversion maintains the same script logic and functionality of the original JCL, which simplify testing and maintenance. The conversion code is based on a one-to-one -one conversion of each step. Programmers maintain their JCL is a new language without having to learn a new logic, but only a new syntax, largely known anyway, of course. The converter is highly customi customizable, and uh, we have interface with most known batch schedulers on the market, and of course with uh, XBM. You can uh, communicate, exchange, check uh, result uh, between uh, these shell scripts and the uh, job scheduler. So it's uh, easily integrated in the dynamic process. For instance, when you create job from CICS to from XCICS to be executed uh, directly in the batch without major change to program files or database table. XSort is a complete uh, sort uh, utility. It's not a separate product, it's part of XFrame suite. So uh, at the budget level, it's quite important when you know the, the price of these uh, sort programs. It's a general sort program that replace DS sort and uh, of course handle all the uh, functionalities of DF sort. Uh, we have the same format of control card. And this leads to a straightforward migration for sort and Iceman steps. It's also highly compatible with sync sort and other known sort tools that you can uh, replace them therefore by X sort. XDMC, XFrame dashboard monitor and console, 
is a reporting tool which provides information similar to ZOS uh, System Management Facility, SMF. It's basically, for those who know that, this is uh, the same format as a type 110 monitoring record for CICS. So it's a single point which monitors several X frame and uh, access to the overall X frame status, all that in a graphical view. So we monitor a lot of different type of information, performance class, processor elapsed time, IO waiting time, exception class, you know, queuing uh, for file, waiting uh, for resources, uh, storage, and transaction class, which are something specific to uh, a transaction. And uh, the recording that are produced by the MC go to a SQL database, MySQL, or another database for uh, further analysis by BI programs. Just to show you the, the screen, you know, we, we don't do demo, we don't have time. And uh, for instance, here you have the, 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 the first screen with the two different X frame, which are uh, managed and followed up. Here you got some general statistics about uh, by system, for instance. And here you get some statistic about uh, CPU, RAM, uh, connected terminals, and uh, transaction. Of course, we'll be glad to go further with uh, some of you who are interested uh, after this webinar during uh, follow-up sessions. H2R. H2R, uh, H2R is a complement of uh, mainframe, but uh, and this is the difference. It can also run on the mainframe, on the, yeah, on the mainframe under ZOS. So it's used to uh, replace IMSDB hierarchical database by a relational uh, database as automatically as possible. So you've got here a list of features. I'm not going to look into details, but uh, you can see that. Uh, we believe us, we have uh, handled most of the, the, the challenge uh, that such migration uh, represents. Automation, no change at the uh, user program level, equal or better performance, uh, source and change, you know, with a CBL, uh, TDLI, and uh, the same for PL1 uh, interfaces. Even the operation code are maintained and also, we have compatible return calls. Of course, you can then mix IMSDB accesses with uh, SQL on the, the target relational database. It's composed of two parts, a data structure analyzer, which collects all the information from the PSBs and the DBDs. And uh, after a sort of analysis, it generates uh, the correspondence to the target database and the program to make the export and the re-import on the target relational database. And the transaction gateway is what is used by the programs in uh, activity, both uh, transactional and batch. And uh, we accept the same command format, which are uh, trans transformed uh, as IMSDB uh, handles, the TBL TDL. Y, uh, AD, and PL, uh, PL1, DLY. There is a high-level program interface, which automatically uh, transfer this uh, DL1, old word for IMSDB, into the corresponding call level request. XBM. Uh, XBM is a batch scheduler. Uh, our own batch scheduler, so it's an option, which reproduce the full execution of a GCL chain in the open environment. As I said before, we connect and support the connection with a major uh, job scheduler. XBM is uh, interesting for the people who, who do not want to continue to use the batch monitor that they have or find some interest, it's modern, it's written in Java, it has a full uh, web interface. Uh, just uh, an, an example here, you'll see uh, the parameter of the uh, planification by months, days, uh, sorry, it's in Italian, 
of the XBM. And then you have a specific job execution, which is characteristic. So you can see all the detail. And, uh, and then the last one is a history of all uh, jobs which have been uh, executed. So it, it's a complete batch scheduler uh, running in conjunction with uh, X-Frame. It uh, can even be used without X-Frame, but uh, most of the time, of course, it's uh, connected to X-Frame. OK, that's a big picture. <laughs> it's a big complex. And of course, I'm not going to comment about all the components here. You recognize a number of names which we have uh, described or at least mentioned before. And uh, this uh, reference uh, slide, of course, uh, if you want to dig in more, uh, more interest and specific, we'll be glad to accompany you on that. There is one subject that we have not talked about which is written here. It's a thing which are related to security. Of course, this is uh, very important. And uh, in terms of security, XFRAME has an uh, LDAP connector. So from this LDAP connector, we can uh, map the racket walls that you have on the mainframe into our security server. And this LDAP connector also can hook up to uh, uh, directory servers, uh, such Active Directory or another one. So uh, we handle all the security issues at a level which is comparable to what you have on the mainframe, but of course in the standard uh, open environment. So that was the end of the technical, I would say, introduction to XFRAME. I hope we can go further with you on that. Now I'm going to talk a little about our uh, delivery model. So COBOL Plus is the name of this combined technology of ISCOBOL and XFRAME variant and HTWC. So together we are uh, making a technology integration bundle aimed at transform transporting, that's the term we use, this mainframe application to uh, this target. So we provide licenses, training, and technical support. That is our main primary activity as a software editor. We are not a company which provides full migration service, turnkey migration services. We contribute to make these uh, in different cases. We can have some customer who have enough uh, internal resources and a good know-how about their uh, referential and that can also be accompanied by external resources which take by themselves the responsibility of the migration it's very common but uh, we know and uh, many of you are of these uh, categories that there are legacy migration uh, modernizers and uh, global system integrators which are specialized in legacy modernization. We already work with some of them, but everyone is uh, welcome in this field to carry on our offer and uh, provide the full service to our customers. And I don't forget the global cloud providers more and more. Uh, these mainframe applications are going to uh, Amazon Web Service, Azure, uh, Google uh, Cloud, for instance, and all type of combination are possible. So what makes COBOL Plus different? Another thing that we have not talked, but of course it's very important. Our costs are extremely competitive and I would say that we have lower costs than our competitors, our non-competitors. We can provide progressive migration. That's very important because this avoid a big bang effect when uh, you can progressively move your application from the mainframe to the uh, distributed open system. We have also all the added value of Iscobol. You will start at the development level with the IDE, but also all the Java deployment. Even if these functionalities are not directly under at the start, they are here because you, you've got Iscobol. So any modernization that you will do after the tactical migration will conduct to strategical evolution of your 
environment that said to, to the Java world. And that's why this COBOL is completely different from other COBOL environments. I'm sorry, I got a, a telephone. I did not expect that. Um, and we are fully dedicated to COBOL modernization and mainframe migration company or group of company. This you have been understood. We have told you several times. And we've got references. It's we are not coming from scratch. We are here with uh, long-standing references. Well, we like to continue to communicate with us. For that, we have a summary questionnaire. We have a full completed questionnaire in Excel form. We uh, can provide you with code analysis review. We can uh, develop POC. And from this uh, full questionnaire, we are able to give you a, a uh, ROM, a rough order of magnitude of the, the cost of uh, migration. All this, of course, uh, in discussion with uh, system incubators or legacy modernization that you, you could wish or that we could propose to you for making a full project. Uh, I think now it's a time for the last poll, Marilyn about COBOL programs. Marilyn? Yep, I've launched the poll. It uh, talks about the number of COBOL programs that you have. I think, um, I think it's gonna be common to get more on the higher okay, side. Okay, this is uh, just a, a mention. Uh, it's important. This is not the, the total number of programs that you have been handling. <laughs> it can be huge. This is uh, the size of, I would say, the, the largest COBOL environment that you have on, uh, let's say, on mainframe. Well, we're getting a pretty even distribution. Oh, no. Nope. Yeah. Now it's leaning more towards the high side. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. You can also display mm, yeah. yeah all right so i'm going to close it and we'll share the results there you go you can see that we have quite a bit of cobol out there mm. okay it's good all right Mary, it's you now i think you okay. have one other question and the, the follow-up okay i'm going to show my my slide very good Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, Bernard. We have some webinars coming up in this series, four more. The next one, next week, is me. I'll be talking about modernization methods, uh, mostly for the open systems people. We'll talk about the IDE and some of the GUI uh, screen options that you can have. And then on the 24th, we have a guest speaker who's going to talk about how he took his existing application and they decided they needed to make a big change and so they moved their COBOL to the back as a REST service and wrote a front end in React JavaScript. So he'll be presenting that and answering your questions. And then on July 1st we will talk we will preview our solution for is COBOL for the ZOS. Uh, that's going to be pretty exciting. And then July 8th Massimo is going to give us the benefit of, of his huge brain and tell us some of the uh, advanced things that you can do with this COBOL. Um, so I hope that you don't miss any of them. If you go to the website that is on the screen, you'll see recordings of the past webinar. And this one, of course, the link will go there as well. Um, and you will also get an e a follow-up email with a link to this webinar. Now, I think I think that's it. Um, we do have a couple of questions, but we are over time. So, uh, Bernard, do you want to answer some here, or shall we just send yeah, emails out yeah, to answer I, them? Well, I see, first of all, you know, a question which we will have to, to go further because the, the question is very general. How do you have an automatic converter? Mm -hmm. uh, we have several <laughs> automatic converters. As you see, we have an automatic converter for shell script. We have uh, an extreme level. It's, we don't talk about conversion because we execute, we mimic the behavior 
of the uh, CICS and the uh, uh, um, mainframe component the, the same way. So the only time where we do conversion is uh, for uh, shell script. But maybe the question is related to conversion of languages, for instance, uh, from assembler. Uh, I don't know. So uh, I saw this one. Maybe you see other, uh, Marilyn? I did see one earlier asking about assembler programs. Oh, OK. Well, that's the same. Uh, yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, well, assembler programs, that's hmm, uh, it's, it's complex, you know. Okay. There are some sites which have a uh, full assembler. There are not many, but there are. So it's, uh, of course, much more complicated to migrate than, than COBOL. So what we recommend is first to analyze uh, the importance of this assembler, because when you switch from a mainframe to a LW platform, in many cases, uh, these assembler programs are technical programs, very old, which were uh, written at the time where some basic functionality of the operating system were not available and they have continued to be used over years or 10 of years, 30 years, 40 years, or maybe even more. So first eliminate the one which are not required. Sometimes it make a good, uh, a good cleaning. Uh, and then uh, to make a distinction between the technical one which are still here and the, the one which are, uh, the one which are related to uh, functionality business so for for the technical one it's possible that we have an equivalent it's probably probable that we're an equivalent in xframe and uh, east cobol we got a lot of functions so uh, a replacement is uh, sometimes possible if uh, it's not possible and for the business one uh, you can do two things. You can rewrite them in COBOL. You write, can rewrite them in Java. And uh, you know that for us, with this COBOL, Java, COBOL, uh, it's the same. <laughs> uh, they work together uh, natively. And uh, the other option uh, with uh, XFRAM, you saw at the beginning that uh, uh, HWC has a service called to change, which is a, a translator from assembler to COBOL. So there are so many things, and we we can handle this. Uh, okay. The time goes. Uh, can we take another one or two or maximum? I see uh, that there are more questions coming. Yes, yeah, so, well, let's do one more. Uh, what are the differences between the MVS and the VSE versions? Can you repeat the question? Uh, they me. want to know what what the difference is between the MVS and the VSE versions are. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, I mentioned that uh, our uh, rehosting, well, a COBOL Plus handle both, the name now is Z uh, OS and Z VSE operating system. The majority is uh, Z uh, OS, but we have a number of references and uh, we have all the tools to convert also from uh, VSE or Z VSE. The difference, uh, the difference is not really the difference. The difference is where we come from, but at the, uh, the result uh, in XCICS is, uh, is basically the same. Uh, for instance, our JCL converter uh, handle both uh, code, JCL code. And XB, XBM, of course, can handle the result of both converted code. So we handle both completely. OK. OK, great. Uh, we have a couple others, but we are getting to close to the an hour here. So perhaps we could email those in answer. Um, and uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to thank you, everyone. And we are available. We have already uh, in the series of uh, webinars started to talk of, uh, with some of you who attended uh, the first session. We would like to continue, and uh, we are really uh, available. That's uh, that's the way we, we see things. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.